What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and in today's video we're going to go ahead and cover the brand new Pirate Alliance Kizuna Clash versus Orochi. Now in this video we are not talking about the super boss. I'll be making an additional video for that so stay tuned to the YouTube channel. Today in this particular video though we're looking at the regular boss and we have a bunch of different teams that are taking on this event today. We've got a free to play team, we've got accessible teams, we've got my personal teams and we'll have some other stuff along the way too so make sure you go ahead and stick around for it before we do that though we're just going to briefly just overview what the kizuna exchange is looking like and unfortunately it doesn't really look anything too crazy i mean it's pretty typical for a super boss kizuna with having you know 2,000 items and three of each of the tablets in box seven unfortunately the newer tablets like fear hunger etc are still not added to this reward system which is one of the most detrimental you know components of this kizuna just in general is that you know some of the rewards are pretty bare bones and honestly it just needs a bit of an update so hopefully we get s something like that in the near future um there's still some okay rewards along the way but it's nothing too crazy i really wanted to go ahead and talk about the brand new orochi character so this is the orochi here uh, mine personally is one away from max limit break and you still need to get those skulls in box seven as well but this is the character that we're all farming for of course when you super evolve him his captain ability and his special ability are going to be a little bit more updated but this guy strength driven powerhouse captain effect if there's six driven characters on the crew you get a 3.5 times boost and if you have five or more strength units you get a 1.3 health boost and to make quick and dex matching for your crew which is actually pretty good and then the special ability removes a couple of different debuffs by two turn bind despair attack down special bind and then doubles your driven character slot effects for one turn and if you've consumed 10 or more strength slots you get a 2.75 times chain lock for one turn it just seems a little bit niche and it is unfortunate that he doesn't actually have a crewmate effect to resist special bind so it makes the ability to remove special bind in his special a little bit odd um very very strange decision there and this is what he's going to look like when you actually super evolve the character his captain effect is slightly different being a four times captain if you have six driven characters on your crew and then if you have five or more strength units you get that 1.3 health and the quick and dex slots are matching so it's not really that much of a difference and then his special ability is as i said slightly updated to be three turn removal of all of the debuffs i wish it was four turns or at the very very least have double special activation but unfortunately he does not he also gives the two times all boost for two turns and then instead of a 2.75 times chain lock when you consume 10 strength slots, it's going to be 3.25 times instead. It just seems a little too niche for my liking. I'm not the biggest fan of the unit overall. And unfortunately, once again, he doesn't actually have the crewmate effect to resist special bind for his special in the first place, which is just a very, very odd decision. A poorly designed unit, definitely my least favorite super boss free to play character that we've had thus far. But it's another Orochi character. He has a couple of okay supports, I suppose. But anyways, that's the rundown of the event, just generically, and the brand new Orochi character. But we have a lot of different teams to showcase in this video today. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, jumping into the video today, we have a lot of different teams. If you guys want to go ahead and check all of them out in specific detail, uh, there should be the timeline on the video itself, as well as the timestamps in the video description. We have a lot of sets of teams here. So first of which is we have our free-to-play teams. We've got the one versus Int, Strength, and Psy. Now, I do want to note that this team here versus Psy, or versus the Int team, should I say, the Psy team you're seeing, uh, it, technically it's not free-to-play because we do have the support of Koala attached to Sabo. So when we use his special, we actually get a bit of despair removal. So realistically, if you want to run a full free-to-play team, you wouldn't run that, obviously. Uh, but of course, if you have better units, you want to use them. Um, so this team, is the team that we were talking about very briefly in my preparation video just the other day we didn't know how many turns of each of the debuffs were going to be available here luckily we actually have access to it now and this is the first run that i did on the entire kizuna so this team probably not amazing uh, obviously because of the damage potential that you could potentially reach here um you see here that we have the shinobu and nami this is actually the secret boss for this kizuna and once you beat this unit you actually get given a 2.75 times attack boost for the entire duration of the quest 
Also, on the left side of the screen, you should be able to see all of the different uh, gimmicks for each of these bosses throughout the entire duration of the video, so hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, currently, as of the recording of this video, we don't have the information for what occurs post level 30 in terms of the actual damage numbers. We do, we do know what happens, it's just we don't know how many turns of that specific debuff uh, are actually going to be applicable here. Um, but I would say it's a safe bet to, to say 5 is going to be the number for some of these debuffs that are going to be inflicted to you, so keep that in mind. The second team of the video is going to be the free-to-play team versus strength and this is also the team that we used in my uh, preparation video of course. Now by using the Kinemon and Denjiro as a friend captain it allows you to just avoid so many different problems that you would be finding in this quest here. Because what happens is, is on the final boss stage you have to deal with the fact that you get a full board of recovery slots and the boss treats them as non-beneficial or unfavorable for four turns. So by having Kinemon and Denjiro as a captain, the recovery slots are actually transformed into Wano slots, which is perfect. And also there is five turns of blue shield on the final boss stage. And after level 30, he actually gains an additional, well, we, we assume it's an additional turn of increased defense. So that would go to six turns. And Kinemon and Denjiro can remove six turns of increased defense. So they're absolutely perfect for this fight. I would highly advise to use them as a friend captain if you have them to make it so much easier for team building. You can definitely build with like a Komurasaki booster friend captain if you wanted to in order to get more tokens and, and tickets. Uh, but I think if you want to have an easier time clearing these bosses, Kinemon and Dendro as a friend captain is going to be the best bet. Moving on now to the free-to-play team versus the Psy variation. Now this again is also the team that we showed off in my video um, just a couple of days ago with the preparation. And this is utilizing Yamato as a friend captain as we can get the amazing effects of her with the Wano slots and the very significant chain boost. Um, I believe in this clip we got pretty lucky and we actually got the hidden boss which gives us a 2.75 times attack boost throughout the entire duration of this quest. Which makes things a lot easier because without that we would have only have had a two times attack boost from the Monkey D. Luffy character. And you know, obviously it's a pretty big difference having a 2.75 boost instead of the two times boost. But uh, realistically speaking, this is still going to do a, a decent chunk of damage here. And what will happen is, is after level 30 you get dealt like an additional turn of paralysis, at least we assume it's one turn extra, on top of what is already given to us here. So that's why we have Raju as our captain because her captain effect actually removes one turn of paralysis. And with Crocodile Special, that removes 5 turns of Paralysis, totaling for 6. If it's more than 6, then this team will not work post level 30. But hopefully, hopefully it's only 6. And then this team will be able to work throughout the entire duration of this quest. Do note though, that after level 30, the enemy gains Resilience. So you need a way to get around that, whether it's removing their Resilience, depending on how many turns they have, or doing an end of turn damage effect. So in this instance here, we have Kid to enable that for us.
The next set of teams here are just what I call quote unquote accessible teams. So they're characters that are, you know, relatively old or characters that lots of people, in my opinion, would probably own. So with this team here, we're using a Komorosaki friend captain just to give us, you know, more tickets and more boss tokens, of course. But we're using Roger as our captain. Now we do have Yamato on the team as well. Yamato is not needed. I mean, you could potentially swap the positions of Roger and Yamato and then switch out Roger for something else, just depending on what you want to do. Um, having Roger or Yamato as your captain for this makes it very easy because both of which have really good utility effects obviously you've got the effect of Yamato which as a captain can remove bind and you've got Roger which can remove despair and you do get inflicted with both of these debuffs on different stages on the int variation boss fight we also have the Sabo once again which can get rid of the attack down after level 30 gives us a color affinity boost so does Komorosaki and then we've got Buggy which gets rid of the bind as well which is what we did in this instance and also procs the super type of Goldie Roger and then Wano Law for the orb boost and the chain boundary and the combination of Wano Law and Yamato together to get the uh, you know the, the, the Wano slots chain boundary chain boost amazing combination there's a lot of damage against this boss too Moving on now to the strength variation team and this team this was really annoying to build for actually because I didn't initially want to build with the friend captain of Kinemon and Denjiro as I said I wanted to build with Komorosaki as a friend captain just to make it a bit better for a lot of you players out there that don't want to play too much you, know, you want to get as many tickets as you possibly can and uh, it just was so much easier to use Kinemon and Dendro as a friend captain but as I mentioned before in the previous clip here um, the fact that they just can get around the uh, blue shield buff as well as the, all the recovery slots we get given on the final boss stage are changed into Wano instead so much easier to use them as the friend captain we're using Sabo Ace as the main captain here because after level 30 we get inflicted with special bind at this point in time I don't know how many turns of special bind we get inflicted with but having Sabo Ace as the captain we can remove that which is pretty awesome, honestly. Uh, we use Vivi here to get the chain lock on the final boss stage. Not needed, you can just use any other chain locker, really, or chain boost, or whatever you want to do. We use the Kuzan to get around the damage threshold on that boss stage. And then on the final boss stage, we have the orb boost with Kinemon Denjiro. We have a conditional boost with the Kuja Pirates. We have the attack boost with the Monkey D. Luffy character. Uh, this is a pretty okay team. Uh, not the best team ever, but not too shabby. Now, the last of these quote-unquote accessible teams is going to be with Reiju. Now, I know Reiju is somewhat of a newer character, same as Robert and Jinbei. I know a lot of people probably don't have them. Robert and Jinbei, you can replace with other units, um, and also Reiju is also somewhat replaceable too. Uh, I just wanted to use Reiju because I haven't used Reiju in a really, really long time. And with this team, we're basically running a full Cerebral team so we can get access to the super type of Reiju, which will enable us to get an orb boost, and then uh, her special actually gives us an attack boost. Reiju is really good here as well because Reiju removes all of the paralysis that we get inflicted with on the final boss stage including you know after you know level 30 we'll get given a lot of additional paralysis so she can actually remove that for us as well also you know with the attack boost or boost great combination of specials there i'm putting is basically here because she removes block slots on the final boss stage but we can actually use her here to carry the base attack boost that robin and jinbei gives us to the final boss stage so not completely required this is uh definitely an interesting strategy but definitely not what you need to do 
in order to get through this fight. We also have the Neptune here because Neptune allows us to remove five turns of resilience. So, you know, post level 30, if the resilience is only five turns, Neptune can remove it. And, you know, you can replace Rage with whatever you want. But Neptune's also an all booster to Powerhouse and Cerebral characters. So do keep that in mind. Halloween Shanks is a boosted unit here. And he actually grants also color affinity and a chain boost. So he's pretty wicked. And then, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty straightforward team, you know, with Komurasaki as the friend to ensure we get as many tickets as possible. So those are the accessible teams. And we'll have two more sets of teams in this video. So stay tuned. So this next set of teams is going to be by uh, one of my Discord members, which is the Lord Shiro, and he has all of the boosters, including all of the recent batch with Kinemon Denjiro and Odin, as well as all of the Kizuna units with Shinobu and also Komorosaki. And he sent through a bunch of clips with his max boosted team. So if you guys want to copy teams like this that have the best boosts possible, then this is what you can go ahead and do. And I'll leave links to his stuff down below in the uh, description of the video. So anyways, uh, speaking about this team, here on stage two uh the bind is removed by a lot of these supports here as you can see but there is actually an additional turn of stall that is inflicted here so we can remove that bind and clear it and then on the final boss stage he did note that he did make a very minor error in using kinemon and denjiro special uh, before using the Bon Clay special. Uh, normally, you would want to use Bon Clay first because remember, both Kindemon and Denjiro and Bon Clay both provide a base attack boost. However, Bon Clay has the best base attack boost in the game, so you would want to use that one first and then use Kindemon and Denjiro. Also, something to note is to make sure to change your Bon Clay into a slasher character so that he actually gets the slasher resistance uh, buff so he actually does more damage towards the enemy as well. But I'll leave you guys with the rest of this clip and we'll move on to the strength variation right after. Moving on now to the strength variation of the Lord Shiro's teams here. Um, on stage two, we're going to be using that Kuzan special, which can get around the defensive effect, as well as giving your crew an attack boost. And then on the final boss stage, um, we are just launching a bunch of specials. This is a pretty basic and straightforward team. Um, one thing to note, though, is that the supports on these characters are quite essential for getting through some of the debuffs post level 30, namely that special bind that you'll have to deal with as there is the Garp support attached to Kuzam, which can remove three turns of special bind. And then there's also the Sabo support, which released relatively recently over the past, you know, couple of months, that is attached to Luffy, which removes an additional two turns of special bind on the final boss stage. So as long as those two supports are active, you won't really have to worry about any other additional effects uh, on this Kizuna fight versus strength.
And then we're going ahead and moving on to the final boss, which is versus Sai with the Lord Shiro's teams. And once again, supports are going to be pretty essential for getting around some of the debuffs or gimmicks on the final boss stage post level 30. Namely, support Rare Recruit Mihawk on Roger and Newgate allows you to do end of turn damage, which is just enabling you to get around the resilience effect a lot easier without having to dedicate a full crew slot to a character that can just remove it for you, which is so, so good. Additionally, there is the Miss Double Finger and Mr. One support on Bon Clay, which can remove additional turns of paralysis, as well as providing a chain boosting effect. So really nice effects there. And it is super ideal that you activate your specials in the correct order, you know, namely using your Bon Clay first and making an int slash a free spirit to get those full combinations of specials active, then Komorosaki, swapping with Kinemon and Denjiro, and then launching the special, and then swapping with Roger and Newgate, and then using their special to get the most optimal damage possible so you can have your huge three times attack boost you'll have your huge orb boost you're going to have color affinity active you're going to have the slasher resistance on the enemy as well this team does some serious damage Alright, now we're going to go ahead and look at my own personal teams that I'm using so far on the Kazuna Clash versus Orochi. So the first team is going to be the Int Variation, of course, and this is just... Pretty bare bones basic what I'm doing. So we have uh, the Odin, of course, which enables us to block some of the damage that we're about to take. However, there is one thing to note that we found out during the stream, and you can see that my HP currently is at an odd number, ending in a 7. The thing is, is before level 30, you only get a 50% health cut. So the thing is, is if you have an odd number, you're not actually going to be at 50%. You're going to be at like 50 point something percent, which means that when you launch the special of Odin, he says that if you're below 50, if you're 50% or below, basically, you get the heal and the damage reduction. But if you're like 50 point, like 1%, you're actually not going to get the damage reduction. So you do have to be very, very careful when you're using Odin. Uh, you know, if you're at that really, really thin line where you could still die, uh, that is a very, very big problem. However, after level 30, the health cut is more significant, which guarantees you that the, the special of Odin will block the damage for you. So that's good, at least. We have the Ashura Doji, who's a boosted character for attack down. We have a very cool support active on Komorosaki, which is Usohachi, which was a Available a very long time ago in a treasure map Sugo Fest. When we launch the special of Komurasaki, it's going to change her slot into a strength slot, which means when we launch the special of Ace, it's going to provide our free spirit and shooters with a 2.5 times orb boost, and we'll also get the chain boundary effect, which is just so, so good. We have color affinity with Komurasaki. We have a huge attack boost via the Odin special as well. This is a great combination of specials, and this is probably what I'll use throughout a, a large majority of this quest until I am able to come up with one team versus all. So now we go ahead and move on to the secondary team, which is versus Strength. Now, this is the team that I'm really not happy with, but, you know, it, it works for now. But later on, this team is going to get an overhaul of some kind. Uh, I'm not really too happy with this one at all. We have the Cat Viper from the Treasure Map Sugo Fest, which is a boosted unit, which is kind of nice. But the special ability of Cat Viper is going to be able to remove the damage threshold on the second stage. And it also provides an attack boost to our quick characters, which is pretty good. And on the final boss stage, we really have to deal with, like, the, the six turns of defense, because post-level 30 is going to be a problem so in order to do that we have the int brook support attached to sober mask and that enables us to remove two turns as soon as the enemy applies it so that's really good and then we have a four turn removal on the sea monster 
However, in terms of overall damage, it's not that high because Sober Mask only provides a 1.75 times attack boost and the Sea Monster provides a 1.75 times orb boost. And yes, you can use the double special of, of Sober Mask in the same turn, but remember, post level 30, we get special binded. So we have to use Boa Hancock first, which means that we don't get two special activations for um, for, for, our, for our turn. So we don't get like the, the additional special for, for Sober Mask. So it, it, we're only stuck with a 1.75 times attack boost. I'm not that happy with this team, but but I, I may change it as time goes on. Just Kinemon and Dendura are so good for this quest. It's ridiculous. That that unit would, would definitely help this team out a lot. But it is what it is. We have to stick with it. And this is what I'm using thus far. Finally, the last team of the video is going to be my own personal team versus Sai. This team's great. Uh, shout out to, I can't remember who it was in my in my Twitch chat when we were streaming this at the time, but they had a really great suggestion of dealing with the resilience. We could just put Luffy Crew on there because Luffy Crew's last tap goes and deals through resilience, which is so good. So we're just going to be using him for not only additional damage, but also for dealing with the resilience. Um, we also have the Reiju for the attack boost, Vivi for the orb boost. We have Komorosaki, of course, because it's the booster, really great captain effect and is also color affinity and then we have the uh also the perona now perona enables us to get the uh, really good orb change on the final boss stage because we get given a, a full board of block slots even though we do get a lot of matching slots here with luffy but also perona provides you know really good chain lock and also the guaranteed conditional boost it's a two times conditional boost so long as we launch her special below 80 percent which is why we're using the moby dick ship so we don't have to dedicate another crew slot to health reduction so this is a perfect combination of specials where we can get uh, huge, huge damage. And I think this is definitely the highest damage potential team that you guys are seeing here. I mean, maybe the first team that I have, my own personal team is also really good too, but that's going to wrap up this video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.